Followers in the House of Black and White pray every morning at dawn before breaking their fast, kneeling before their black pool. But to become a servant of the many-faced God, it takes more than kneeling in prayer. This is part of my House of Black and White series. In part one, I talked about the many-faced God and how his religion was founded. In part two, I talked about the many-faced God's temple, the House of Black and White. In this video, I want to talk about how you become a servant of the many-faced God and move up through the ranks and quite possibly become part of the faceless men. Fair warning, because these steps aren't laid out for us clear and cut, I can only guess based on the information we got from the novels and try to put it together as logically as possible. So what does it take to become a servant of the many-faced God, move up through the order, and maybe eventually become part of the faceless men. It's said the path to become a servant of him of many faces is the hardest, and that it isn't something you can buy with gold. It requires you to have uncommon strength of the body and spirit, with a heart that is both hard and strong. You cannot have any pride. You aren't there for yourself, but to serve your God. And that comes at a cost, which is all of you. To serve him of many faces, you are required to give up yourself, your hopes, dreams, loves and hates, your tongue, nose, eyes, ears, and everything that makes you, you. Only as no one can you truly serve the many-faced God. It should be noted that most that serve this God are men, though a few women do serve the order. And this is because women are capable of giving life through pregnancy, and servants of the many-faced God are supposed to give death. And they believe that one person shouldn't be able to do both. You shouldn't be able to give life and give death. So if you're a woman and you want to join this order, you have to give up your future of ever having children. And I highly doubt they just make you pinky promise you will never have children. Take that train of thought where you will. So that's great. You are willing to give up yourself. If you're a woman, you're willing to give up a future with children. You want to become a servant of the many-faced God. Well, what are the steps? What's the procedure to moving up through their order? As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we don't have clear-cut steps. We can only piece together from Arya's journey through the House of Black and White and her going up through their ranks and their order. So George could release a manual next year saying, hey, this is how you normally go up through it, and this is how Arya did it, and she wasn't very traditional. So keep in mind that I'm only piecing this together from Arya's journey and making the best guesses I can. But there is a saying about assumptions, and I'm hoping that's not true in this case. George, please. To start off, you must have some sort of recommendation to first stay at the temple and must prove you aren't afraid of death. This test most likely is the same for all potential servants. The kindly man reveals himself to be a skull with scraps of flesh, and you must prove you aren't afraid of death by not being afraid of the illusion. Passing this first test allows you to stay, but you must serve obediently at the temple, doing your share of work and tasks, and you must try to continuously become no one. These tasks can change from day to day and can range from helping in the kitchen to serving meals to cleaning the temple, maybe going through piles of clothing and sorting it or emptying the purses of dead people and stacking coins. As well, you might also be following a priest around the temple locating dead bodies. It's always a good time at the House of Black and White. While doing these tasks, you're likely to be questioned every day. And these questions usually are, who are you? and why are you here? And as for the who are you question, the appropriate answer is no one. And they can tell when you're lying, so even if you really don't feel like you're no one yet and you're retaining parts of your old identity, they don't expect you to just shed yourself within the first week or month of being there. It's just to get you used to the idea of being no one and training you to become that person or not that person. As for the why are you here, it's very important for them that you aren't coming to the temple as a form of learning how to kill to take out your own vengeance on the world. So if you're there just to learn how to kill people and take out some list you have, cough Arya, they generally don't want to train you to do that because that's not the point. They aren't the ones that decide who lives or dies. Their god does. You also might be given outs at this time and they'll let you know that even though you live in their temple and you're doing these tasks, you aren't one of them yet. If you want to, you can leave at any time. And they might even give you paths to go on if you leave. Hey, we can arrange this marriage for you. We can arrange for you to work here. Just 
let us know, we'll make it happen, and you can leave. How many opportunities they give you, or if they give you any opportunities besides you can leave if you want, isn't really known. Arya is given of quite a few opportunities, and really nice opportunities, but it might change from person to person. You are told, though, if you leave the temple without permission at any time, you may never come back. So when they're saying you can leave at any time, it's a, once you leave, you're gone for good. But you aren't part of us yet, so you have that opportunity. I would take it now if you want it. Proving you're able to do this first step, and you're able to shed your belongings, a priest will likely then share with you some of the history of their order and how their religion came to be. And if you want to know about how their order actually was founded, you can listen to part one, and it's kind of a fun story. They will then offer to teach you a language, most likely Bravosi, and to start learning the Lion Game. If you agree to do this, if you agree to learn languages, if you agree to learn how to lie, you at that time will become a novice. And it likely happens after that, after they give you a little bit of time seeing that, again, you're able to be obedient, you're doing these tasks, and then you have a willingness to learn more. Yes, I'm willing to learn this language. Yes, I'm willing to learn to play the lying game so I can learn to lie. And once they realize that you have a bit of dedication to the order, they know you're not 100% there yet, they will give you that new rank. Once a novice, you will start mastering your own face. And this is so you can better tell lies. And probably so that you can also learn to tell other people's lies, because through mastering your own face and seeing your own facial tics, you can start to understand other people's. And you might spend an hour in front of the mirror every morning or every day trying to master your face, making faces, change it, control yourself, or any of that stuff. Shortly after that, you will likely be told to help prepare corpses. Many months of this will go by, with you washing and preparing corpses, mastering your own face, playing the lying game, remembering to be no one, and doing your tasks about the temple. You might even have the privilege of serving refreshments at a meeting among the faceless men who are going over kill contracts. But it is very important you do not talk or make eye contact with them. After months of serving, you will finally be sent out on an assignment in Bravos. This assignment could be for many reasons. Learning languages, to observe your surroundings, practical experience, and more. Though out on assignment, you will be required to go back to the House of Black and White to report. And how often this is may change. What we know is three days out of every week coming back and reporting. It could be different from every person. It might be once a week, it might be once every other week, it might be a couple times a month. It's not exactly known, but what it is known is that when you come back, you have to report what you learned. In Arya's case, it was three things that she learned while out on assignment. For a different person, it might be more, it might be less. But while they are at the temple, whether it's three days that week or a few days in the month, they will be required to do the tasks that they did before they left on assignment. So that is cleaning, cooking, washing the corpses. They might now learn how to make poisons or help a priest make potions. And so they do those tasks while they're at the temple. And then once those days are up, they go back out on assignment and resume what they're doing. At this time, your training actually becomes quite a bit harsher, and on the days you're back in the temple, you're going to be punished for not meeting expectations. And one of those expectations is becoming no one. And if you retain something of your old self, such as if you have a nervous habit of rubbing your head or biting your lip or stuttering, if they see you or hear you having those traits of your old self, they will punish you in an attempt to break you of that and teach you you're no one. No one doesn't stutter. No one doesn't rub their head, unless that's the person we're having you become for a mission. Eventually, you will be blinded. Typically, this is done after at least six months of serving, but it can be accelerated in special cases, such as with Arya. And this blinding is probably very random to you. You maybe are out on an assignment, and then you come back to the temple for a few days, and bam, you're blinded. Or maybe you finish your assignment, and you come back to the temple, and they blind you right away. There's a lot of guesswork for when exactly they blind you, because the only thing we know is the kindly man said, yeah, eventually we would have blinded you. It's the kind of thing we do, but we usually wait six months before we do that. Being blinded is done so that servants of the many-faced god can learn to use their other senses besides eyesight. So to use their hearing in order to detect a lie, to use smell in order to navigate, or hearing in order to navigate. During this time, you will also begin to learn other languages. When a priest feels you adequately learn the lesson, if you don't first beg for your eyes back and then get booted out of the temple, they will give you your eyes back. 
Afterwards, a priest will likely bring you in front of one of the faceless men and he will question you and figure out whether he thinks you should belong in the order or not. If he decides that, yeah, we're going to give you a chance, we're going to keep you in here, you're going to be given a task. And the task is probably assassinating someone. Congratulations, you got towards the killing phase. This is likely the first time you use a face to disguise yourself, even though you're not the one applying it. One of the priests will apply the face for you. And in my part four, I'm going to talk about that and how terrifying of an experience it can be for first time people putting on a face. And likely still a rough experience for quite a while until you get used to the experiences. If you successfully kill your target, you will then become an acolyte and be given your first apprenticeship. So that so far is all we know about how you become a servant of the Many-Faced God and move up through their order. And hopefully in the next book we will get tons more information. I'm going to be releasing a bonus video that is audio only because of the level of detail that it has, showing Arya's journey through the House of Black and White and every single step she had to go through. So expect to see that soon, but know that it's going to be audio only because of the level of detail would be so awful to try to do in front of a camera and remember each and every line. Besides that, stay tuned for part four, which is going to be about the faceless men. And besides that, come back every week for comic videos, Star Wars videos, Game of Thrones videos, and anything sci-fi fantasy related.